Shui from the Guashashara tribe is defending the Amazon rainforest, the traditional homeland of his people. He and his warriors are fighting against illegal logging in northeastern Brazil at the Araribóia Indigenous Reserve. It's a perilous undertaking. More than 60 warriors from his tribe alone have been killed in recent years. Shui has also received death threats, but he's not giving up. He and his fellow Guashashara feel they cannot rely on government protection no matter what the outcome of Brazil's presidential elections. They need to help themselves. Shui and his warriors are on patrol. A chief has informed them that loggers have gained access to his forest by bribing members of the indigenous population. This makes Shui's mission even more dangerous. He can't let the corrupt tribe members know that he's on to them. The clearing's up ahead. We'll go along here to get there. They call themselves the guardians of the forest and defend the Guashashara people's reserve in Maranhão, Brazil. Shui and his group leave their weapons with the rest of the troop, so they won't stand out while they're getting the lay of the land. Let's go, people. They're going on ahead to scout things out and look for clues of illegal logging. Hidden in a thicket, they discover one a prized tree that's been felled. They cut down the trees, but sometimes don't even take them away because they found something better. That's very hurtful to us warriors. It's sad to see wood lying around like this. Tropical hardwoods from the Amazon are in demand in Brazil and around the globe, but only logs of the right size. This one here will make lots of boards, lots, and each one is costly. So the things of ours they're selling are extremely valuable. Then they find someone's cut a swath through the forest illegally. This is the loggers' transport route. The truck has been here already. Look at the destruction they've caused. The tallest and strongest trees are gone, along with the parrots and numerous other species who call the forest home. This here is the logger's unit of measure. This is two units. You can use this to build a house, for furniture, doors and gates. The logs can't be longer than this, otherwise they won't fit into the truck. The loggers use bribes or intimidation to secure the help of the indigenous population. They terrorize our tribesmen and offer them little things, like a packet of salt or such rubbish that doesn't even come close to paying for the wood that they take from us. Then in the distance, they hear the roar of a chainsaw. If Shui and his men are going to confront the loggers, they need to find reinforcements fast or risk paying with their lives. They're armed. If we just show up the way we are now, they'll simply kill us all. Protecting the reserve is really the job of the Brazilian state. But officials usually only get involved after the indigenous people have taken action. Attempts to press charges often go nowhere, and state aid is a long time coming. So Shui and his men defend the forest as best they can. I want the forest to return to the way it was before, and that's possible. We just have to watch over it and drive out these invaders. All around, the extent of the destruction is clearly evident. The trees have made way for grazing land. Around three quarters of the Amazon rainforest in the state of Maranhão has already been destroyed. 
Only within protected areas like the Araraboya Reserve does dense forest remain. But even here, more land has been deforested than in almost any of the other indigenous territories. And that has increased the already high risk of forest fires. Around 5,500 members of the Guashashara tribe live in Araraboya. Like Shui and his family, most live in modest circumstances from a bit of social assistance. Shui receives no compensation for his work as a guardian of the forest, though this takes up most of his time. When we set off to check out an area, we don't return the same day. We spend more than 15 days in the woods. They do everything on foot, as they lack cars or motorbikes. The government has cut off the technical and financial support it once provided. The land rights of indigenous peoples and environmental protection aren't a political priority in Brazil. So Shui documents the operations he and his men carry out using his cell phone. We apprehended these guys. One is a member of a neighboring tribe, one's a fellow Guashashara. We were tired of hearing the buzz of the chainsaw here in the area. You're destroying our home, mister. Trees are our life, our soul. We don't invade your territory. We tied them up because we don't trust them. They come prepared. If we let them go, they might have a weapon hidden away somewhere, and bang! That's why we tied them up. As soon as we've searched this entire area, we'll let them go. Setting a truck on fire is common practice here. Even the Brazilian Environment Agency resorts to setting vehicles ablaze in the fight against illegal logging. Still, it's a risky provocation. Trucks like this don't come cheap. So when we set one on fire, we inflame the owner's anger at us even more. Now we can't even set foot on their territory. The loggers say, if you show up, we'll kill you. Shui is preparing for a meeting of the tribe's members. Illegal deforestation and the loggers' threats have become major issues. More than 60 Guashasharas have been murdered in recent years mainly because they, like Shui, went up against the loggers. Tribal members have come from all parts of the reserve. Even on the way to the meeting, Shui uses the opportunity to convince newcomers not to accept bribes from the loggers. I want each and every one of you to protect our land. Shui is 30 and heads a group of 15 warriors He's the coordinator of one of the reserve's eight regions. At their annual general meeting, he's one of 60 guardians of the forest here to decide on a common strategy. They have over 4,000 square meters of land to watch over. It can hardly be done without technical equipment and support from the police. One of Shui's most experienced warriors, José, speaks for most everyone here when he says, I can't confront a guy who's armed to the teeth, bare-chested and without a weapon. The police have to come along. And every coordinator shouldn't just develop his own plan. There must be unity. They also want the police to patrol on foot, not just in their cars, so they can go deeper into the woods. I want these invaders to be hunted down, and not just on the roads. Sticking to routes that are accessible by vehicle just won't work. For the Guashashara, the annual meeting is the most important event of the year. Representatives from the reserve talk with reps from NGOs and the Brazilian authorities about pressing issues like investing in education, infrastructure and fire prevention and above all, protecting their territory. We're a people of fighters. We're warriors. 
My fight is for our territory. Together, we can also influence policy. Our fight is for unity. Their chant is meant to unite the voices of Brazil's indigenous community. These 900,000 people have no political lobby in Brazil. In this month's elections, Joenia Wapichana became the first indigenous woman to be elected to Congress. But if they're to effect any change, many more indigenous politicians must follow her lead. The Guashashara are pinning their hopes on their young people. Shui's men block off the road so the Guashashara can celebrate the next generation of warriors with a traditional festival. It's not easy for us to protect our culture. It's a struggle to preserve our rhythm and way of life. But we're still young, and it's up to us to safeguard our customs more and more. Shui needs reinforcements, most of all from the younger generation because the fight to preserve the land of their forefathers will also determine the Guashashara's future.